Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Carol C.C. Miller, your positive impact coach, peace activator, and global hugger, coming to you another episode of Embrace Your Life Chats, where we focus on heightening our celebrations and lessening our sorrows through a positive focus. And today I'm excited to have a guest, so I'm going to get into that in a moment, but I always like to um, make sure people know where I'm coming from. And I'm not a big believer in the words always and never, although I just use the word always because I've done things that I've said I would never do before. So I live on a scale of zero to 100, zero being always unkind and 100 being always kind. I personally don't know anybody who is 100 or the zero. I focus my daily practice is staying between the 80 and 100 percent. And sometimes I fall below that, but I have the daily practices and tools to stay in that. I am not always kind, even though I coach on kindness. I am not always loving, compassionate, and peaceful. Generally speaking, when I'm not, it's aimed at myself. I feel it quickly, and I move towards feeling a little bit better. So today I have a fun friend and amazing guest. <clears throat> she lives in my dream place, so and we'll discuss that as well. But um, Dr. Lisa Thompson is a best-selling author, speaker, designer, and intuitive transformational coach who supports and empowers women to intentionally design their best life by living from their yes. So they can embrace self-love, trust their intuition, and gracefully move forward through their fears to take inspired action to live a life they love. Um, welcome, 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 Lisa. And before we get started, I just mentioned that you live in um, one of my favorite places. You've moved to Hawaii. Yeah. So we're going to talk about using um, a process that you've studied for years and you use in your own coaching practice and in your personal life, um, the human design. But how did your, first of all, you live in Hawaii, for goodness <laughs> sakes. Like, <laughs> my gosh. Um, you just moved in January of this year? Yeah, actually, December 30th. Okay, December 30th. Um, I love Chicago, as everybody knows, but I would happily live someplace else for two to three months of our winters for sure. So I will I will visit you at some point in, in the Chicago's not so pleasant months. But you talked about using your human design and the yes. How did you use your inner authority? And can you explain what inner authority or maybe just a, a background on what human design is and how how it's helped you lead your life that you love? Perfect. Yeah, let's start because some people don't know what human design is. Um, it's a newer modality that was founded in the late 1980s. And what it is, it's a combination of Western astrology, the I Ching, the Kabbalah tree of life, the Hindu chakra system, genetics, and quantum mechanics. Just so a few things. Just a few things. <laughs> just a few, yeah. So it's really science meets spirituality, which is what I love being a scientist in my former former life, we'll call it, back in Chicago, actually. <laughs> Don't miss those winters. So um, when we do a human design chart, so you need three things. You need your birth day, your birth time, and your birth location. And with that information, similar to astrology, a chart is generated like this. I yes. have mine. Yes. I have my notes on it. <laughs> and... From that chart, then you can find out who you were designed to be in this life. So you can also find out what your epigenetic lineage is, the traits that you're bringing forth from your family coming into this life, which can be an interesting facet of this. But for me, when I started learning this about seven years ago, I was working with a coach and I just wanted general information about me. I never thought I would actually be practicing it in terms of working with my clients and actually how much I would be using it in my daily life. And so really um, we get so conditioned with society, with our families, our friends, and how we are supposed to be operating in the world, how we're supposed to be making our, our decisions, um, overriding our inner wisdom, and so when we actually find out how we were designed to be, then there are some practical um, tools, skills, and some advice that we can then move forward in our life to have our lives flow beautifully. And we're not pushing against the current anymore. 
we're just allowing things to either come, you know, if we are generators, manifesting generators, projectors, and reflectors, or if we're manifestors, then we are pushing forward and not letting anyone hold us back. And the other thing, though, is that the inner authority is specifically how someone is designed to get to their yes. And we we all are a little bit different in how that, that operates. And so today, hopefully we can talk, go into a little more detail about some of the different aspects of that. But for me, um, when I started working with my human design um, and specifically my type and my inner authority, when I started trusting that that was real for me, that that was actually the way that I operate best, things started happening in my life. And so the most recent example is a year ago, you know, we're in lockdown and COVID and my family and I were sitting around the dinner table and my daughter throws this out. She's like, I want to move to California and nothing against California. I love California, but I was like, I would never want to live in California. Never, the water's too cold for me. That's actually the biggest <laughs> thing. <laughs> I'm a water ocean girl. The water is too cold there. And so I, you know, it didn't, I didn't even think about it, but right out of my mouth came, but I had moved to Hawaii. And then my husband, he was like, well, I've moved to Hawaii. And we kind of looked at each other like, huh, maybe one day we'll move to Hawaii. And then both of us have sacral authority. We've got that gut knowingness. And so as things started progressing, we just started talking more and more about it. Cause at first it started being, oh, in a couple of years. Yeah, let's plan for that. Because if we retire, maybe we'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. We had been wanting to snowbird for um, when the kids finish school, but we saw it another 10 years before we could do that. And so we had a lot, this long-term plan that we were gonna snowbird because we were living in rainy Washington state and my husband, um, you know, the gray, the months of gray would really get him down. And so it's beautiful there because of all the rain, but that's not really mean it's easy to live there. Yeah. And so we, so that's why we wanted to snowbird was to get him in sun. And so then that two years got sped up to, well, maybe within one year we'll do that. And then we just kept following that gut feeling of like, oh, okay, maybe it's sooner, maybe it's sooner. And so then we, um, it took six months and we were here with three pets, um, our family. And I need to stop you for a second. Cause you just said it took six months. Like that was a long time. You decided one day, what if we maybe let's move to Hawaii. And in six months you have not, it's not like moving to a different city close by. You move to an island where they're in, during COVID, so there are restrictions involved. So yeah. in just six months, we went from the idea to it happening. Right. Well, and um, at the time that we were shopping for houses, there was still a mandatory two-week quarantine um, if you flew over to Hawaii. So we ended up... Um, you know, we knew this was going to happen. We didn't know how. We, I, again, it's all about trust. Once you say, once you get a true yes and you take that first step, the next steps start showing themselves. And if you just keep following that, this is your inner GPS, your soul's guide for you to get to what you want. And so um, every step that we would take would get us closer and closer. And there, we didn't have really any obstacles, which was telling me, okay, this is truly what we are meant to be doing. You know, normally if it's not a good direction, all these different obstacles would be in the way. But the biggest one was like, okay, we, we thought we wanted to rent because we wanted to figure out what area we wanted to live in. But then with- three You pets, chose the big island too. So we did. Yeah, we chose the Big Island and there were a couple of reasons for specifically choosing the Big Island. We, you know, we did some research on the different islands, but I had been here nine years ago. And in fact, it's nine years ago this week that I was here um, on vacation with my ex-husband. And the, there's a resident population of manta rays that lives here year round. And as a former manta ray, stingray, shark biologist, um, that experience was the one, like one of the best things I've ever done in my life. 
And I'm like, if I could do that a lot, <laughs> that would be amazing. It's like I live on vacation. And so that the manta rays were actually one of the huge reasons why we chose the Big Island. And then a, another reason we chose the Big Island was um, we do love Maui, but it was too small of an island. We, th we thought we would get island fever a lot faster. And then Oahu with Honolulu, it was just, it was too big city, too much. Like living like, in Chicago on, on the ocean. <laughs> exactly, or Seattle or something. And yeah. so um, the big island, I had been here. And here's where, you know, trust comes in. I had been here, but my husband and my daughter had never been to the big island. And so they just trusted me that this was the place we were meant to be. And so we weren't able to rent a place because of the three pets. So then we had to look into buying. And so then we had to buy sight unseen. You know, our real estate agent did a video tours, a couple homes. And we're like, okay, I guess it's that one. And we got the house and here we are. <laughs> I love it. I just want to say really quickly, um, Vicky's here. Hi, Vicky, Georgie. Hi. Tammy and Brandy and Tammy says she absolutely loves the human design. Yeah. Um, I don't know if she's taking courses with you. I just took a brief course with you and it was a little overwhelming because there's so much inf good information, but so much information. And so you were talking about using your yes by knowing your inner authority. Yes. So my inner authority is an emo emotional authority, which is shocking to me that I would be an emotional authority. But what is your inner authority and how is it? What does that mean? OK, so really, it's how we process our answers, how we get to a yes, a no or a maybe. And so for you, Carol, and you're 51 percent of the population. So. um when you have emotional authority, what's going to happen is that some opportunity, some question will be posed to you, some situation will come up that you have to make an answer, you know, give an answer, a yes or no kind of answer and figure out whether you're going to move forward with that. And so being emotional authority, you're going to go through a little bit of a roller coaster ride of emotions um, over a period of a few maybe seconds, minutes. It could be days for some people. It can take a few weeks, but you're going through this up and down kind of roller coaster ride and you're not supposed to make decisions during that emotional ride, because if you do, if you make it at the high or the low, then it's likely not going to be the best for your highest and greatest good. So you want to just observe that emotional wave. And then when you hit neutral, you come to a neutral place. That's where your clarity is. And for emotional authority, it's clarity over time. So you want to keep asking yourself, how do I feel? How do I feel? How do I feel? And if you're still getting, a, yeah, this feels good. Yes, yes, yes. Then you know you're on the right path. But if you get a yes, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, nope. Then you know that, okay, that would, that's not the right path. So it's kind of tricky. Emotional authority is one is one of the trickier ones because number one, it takes patience. Which because, I don't <laughs> have. <laughs> I know. And I'm um that's one thing. I, I have sacral authority. And so I'm very I feel very thankful for me because I don't have that patience uh, quality very well either. And so um, but for someone like me. I have to be patient for someone like you to give me your answer. And, but the thing is, you just have to be patient with yourself, observe the emotions, don't live in them, just observe them. And then when you come to that nice, like neutral place, mm -hmm. that's where the clarity is. And, you know, for you, you're a generator as well. So that's your type. So a generator is all about the gut. We have this powerhouse gut sacral energy. And so what might happen for you being a generator with, with emotional authority is you might get an initial gut reaction of your answer. But for you, that's your cue that you need to just like know, okay, now the emotions are going to come and let them play out. And then your answer- they play a lot. <laughs> 
<laughs> your answer may or may not be the same as what that initial gut is, but for for you, the gut is just saying, okay, pay attention now. Okay. Here, here's our emotions coming. Okay, so that's emotional authority, and again, fifty one percent of the population. So that's a lot. A lot of people need time to process. In fact, the sacral authority is the only one truly that can get an answer immediately on the spot. Sometimes, and that's what you are. It is. And so what that looks like is, um, so I will have a question posed or again, a situation come up, something for me to respond to. And I, it's, it's an energy expansion in your belly area. And so you're going to, it's not anything with the logical mind. None of the inner authorities have anything to do with logic. And so it's going to be like, if, if you were to ask me some yes, no questions, I would start feeling it in my gut and I'd be answering from my gut without even going to my brain. It's just an uh-huh or an uh-uh. And so um, when I get that, like this moving to Hawaii, um, I was I was like, oh yeah, even though it didn't make sense. Cause we're, you know, we were very well established in our community in Olympia and so I have a question for you on that. And thank you, Tammy. I'm, I'm glad that I'm not alone in the emotional <laughs> authority. You're a manifesting generator, though. So um, I'll have to ask Lisa in a moment what the difference between generator and manifesting generator. But Lisa, as you know, um, I had this year, this past year, decided that I was not going to be in Chicago in January. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought, I mean, I like my initial thing was Hawaii because that is my happiest place. And then I ended up where I'm actually going to be on the Gulf of Mexico in Florida. But I'm curious if, because I didn't really let it play out, like, I mean, it probably was a week or so before I finalized my decision, but I almost feel, I, and I'm excited about where I'm going. It looks beautiful, but I almost feel that fear stepped in that I could not manage Hawaii like that was too big of a leap to do where you just did it so is that the difference from and, and I don't know maybe my my true yes was no Hawaii is not right right now let's do Florida this time I I don't know but I'm curious if you have an idea about that okay well a couple things just looking at your chart but my first question to you would be is how are you feeling about Florida right now like, does it, are you excited about it? Yes, I'm super excited about it, but Hawaii is still my sweet spot. Okay. <laughs> but I'm very excited about the, um, being in Florida on the Gulf. Okay. So then I guess for, for you, one of the things about human design, we have nine energy centers and your splenic center um, is undefined. And I'll explain what that means because this can play into fears. So the splenic center is where our instincts, our intuition, our fears, and our safety sit. You being undefined, what that means is that you would have a potential. I'm not gonna, it's not like it happens this way, but people with undefined centers. They absorb other people's energy. And so in this case, you would have, uh, you might have absorbed other people's fears about doing that thing in Hawaii. And because it's not your own fear, it's someone else's fear, then you might have a tendency to amplify it, to make it bigger than what it is, which can cause you to be almost in paralysis of moving forward because it's not a fear that normally sits within you. So I don't know if that's the case for this specific Hawaii thing, but that that is just something to note about your specific human design in terms of you, it makes you highly psychic and intuitive, but it also means that you can yeah. be seeing other people in a way that you know may not be healthy for you. Now that makes total sense because um, I talk about it in a way, and, and you being the marine biologist, you're probably going to say this isn't accurate, so don't take this joy away from me. <laughs> but I often say, and I don't even know where I heard this example, but when you share your dreams, you share them with your dolphin friends, because if there's an injured animal, the dolphins will protect it. And if you 
share it with your shark friends with blood they attack so yeah. your sharks may still love you it might be your parents who are trying to hold you back because they're worried about you and your um, dolphin friends are the ones who say go to hawaii for that month it'll be amazing um, so I am sure that that came into play, but I am very excited about um, being on the Gulf of Mexico too. It's warm water and I get to see um, sunsets every night. So yes, well, and so maybe next year you're coming to Hawaii. Exactly. Or just not for a month and I come for a couple weeks. So <laughs> exactly. It, yeah. It doesn't have to be like all or nothing. Like you were saying at the beginning of the show, right? Yeah. There's always a possibility. So, <laughs> There's so many different things in here when I'm looking at my list. So I'm a generator. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Tammy said she's a manifesting generator. Yes. Okay. What is, what is the difference between that and what are you in, in the type? Okay. So I'm also a generator. And um, okay. So generators and manifesting generators are very similar to each other. Manifesting generator is just kind of a subset under being a generator. We we all have the same strategy of waiting to respond. And what that means is that we are not meant to go out and initiate and push for things to happen. What we're supposed to do is sit back, well, put ourselves out, uh, I'll say that. We don't just sit at home waiting for things to come. We just put ourselves out in the world, just doing our normal thing. But in that, we are natural vortexes bringing things into our life, bringing opportunities, people into our lives. And that is what we have to respond to. So we're waiting for something to come our way to then respond. So now a manifesting generator is slightly different because as generators, you and I, once we say yes to something, whether it's a real yes or not, if we say yes and we get on that train, we are going to go down that train until it stops. We can't, we have a really hard time stopping ourselves if it's not a good situation all of a sudden. Where a manifesting generator, they have this natural built in ability to, if they all of a sudden are getting like, oh, this isn't good, they can stop themselves on the dime, pivot, and go a different direction. And so, really, it's so important for us generators so we are generators and manifesting generators we have unlimited energy to do the things the projects that we want to do but only when it's from a place of a true yes for us and so we really need to make sure we're not saying yes to too many things and i know all of us here. <laughs> never ever ever do i say yes to too many things you, you, i know we all have, have had a tendency to say yes to probably too many things and so now it's like no what it what's a true yes and being willing to disappoint other people being willing to like not follow someone else's agenda for us you know so that it's best this is all about what's best for us and what's best for us ultimately is what's best for other people. Right. Okay. So all of this is super fascinating. Um, the next one is signature minus satisfaction. What does that mean? Okay. So um, some of the different, um, so ours, yeah. Gen so basically that's, that is what we are seeking out in life. We just, we want to be satisfied with our life. Um, whereas like a manifester, they, they want success. And so there's, the signature really is just about what's going to fulfill you, where you know that you're like, okay, this is a good place to be. Yeah. Tammy just says, just be thankful you're not a reflector who has to wait a full lunar cycle. I think in the class I took with you, there was one reflector, right? Because that's like a very small percentage of people. Exactly. It's 1% of the population. And um, that Can you will explain what that is, what the reflector is. The reflector. So when you have your chart here, some of the um, some of the areas are colored in and some of them are completely white of the nine energy centers a reflector has all white they don't have any energy centers filled in and again they're one percent of the population so they are true mirror balls reflecting out to everyone else who and what they are 
And it's not, they are not judging other people, but other people will judge that reflector based on what they're seeing in that mirror because they're okay. seeing themselves. So what happens is if you are someone who's full of self-confidence, love, you know, just you're a joyful person, when you meet that reflector, you are gonna love that person because you're gonna see exactly what you are. Okay. But if you're someone that's, you know, a little more like, angry, mean, whatever, Shamer. exactly. Then that's what you're going to see in that reflector. You're, you're going to think it's them and you're not going to like them, but it's actually you. Okay. Yeah. I, that, that could be a challenging one to be for sure. Shanda is here with us too. Hi, Shanda. So, okay. So the next one is not self theme. Okay. And this when I first got this before, Lisa explained it. I was not happy because mine is frustration. I was frustrated with the results of this one. <laughs> well, so what this is, and it's same one as me, same one as Tammy, being a man, Jen. So what this means is that when we start feeling frustrated in our life, then we know there's something off. We are not following whatever path that we want to, we truly want to be following. And so that's just a cue to us that we can observe of like, okay, something's not right here. What do I need to do? Maybe I'm pushing too hard. Maybe I'm like trying too hard. Maybe this isn't the right direction for me. Maybe this isn't the right person for me to be with for this particular situation. Okay. And so it's just information that tells us like, okay, check, you, check what's going on. Okay, that makes sense. Amendi, yeah. we are talking about human design today, and Dr. Lisa Thompson um, has classes in it, does individual charts in it. I took a class, I don't know, it's been a few months ago now with her, and, and, and it's just fascinating information. So I wanted to share her talents and just share Lisa with you guys. So um, Lisa, so the next one is strategy, and okay. mine is to respond. What is that? Okay. So yeah. So the, again, that one we, we were talking about where we are not supposed to go and like, we're. I'll give you an example. We're sitting in our offices all alone and we have an idea that no one's asked us for and we try to put it out into the world. Um, that would be something that a manifester could do. Manifestors are only about 8% of the population. So they can initiate things like that. Just like, just putting stuff out that no one asked for. We don't do very well doing that. We tend to um, either fail when we do that or it's it's effort and struggle. It's just really hard. And there still tends to be some failure with that. So what we are meant to do is have an opportunity, come our way, a situation, an email, a phone call, whatever it is, even we'll, we'll see a flyer on a bulletin board. That is something that then we can respond to. And so, um, you know, we both have, we have our mutual mentor friend, Sunny Don Johnston. She's also a generator. And she, as an example, cause I always thought, oh, she's just always creating all these classes and new things that she does, right? Well, she does it when people ask her, hey, have you thought about doing this? Hey, can you teach something in that? or create okay. that. And so she actually, without even knowing it, she just naturally was waiting to respond to people. She wasn't ever really just creating out of like pure nothingness. It really was because someone wanted something and then she could say yes or no, do I wanna do that? So that makes a lot of sense. So would that be like visionaries or the ones who don't like they just create it they don't need to respond to yeah, it so they're exactly. the, the initiators of the idea rather than responding to an idea exactly okay so, that, yeah. that makes a lot of sense so the manifestors that's a really good way to put it they are the visionaries they're not necessarily the implementers um that's where we come in <laughs> we are <laughs> we're the doers the busy bees um doing the work saying yes um, now, then you have your projectors who their strategy is to wait for an invitation or to be recognized. So it's even like more sitting back, kind of waiting, like, am I included in this or not? Um, 
And but they don't have the natural energy that we have. And so they're actually meant to be on teams and more the managers of projects, kind okay. of team stuff. And then the reflectors are sitting back telling people how well they're doing, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Okay. And then inner authority we discussed. Mm -hmm. Incarnation cross. That might be too much to get into on this. It's, it's detailed because there are so many different ones. But what, what the incarnation cross is your overall life theme. Okay. Really. So, but that's something that we get into a little deeper into that because in human design, not only do we have the overall life theme, but your son. Um, whatever gate your sun is in, that has 70% influence on your overall chart. And then you also have your north and south nodes, which are your life focus. Um, south node is from age zero to 40, and north node is 40 to death. So okay. there's a lot, <laughs> a lot more of that. Well, and I think something that you said early on was about trusting, too, because when I think of the fact of being a generator that I tend to like and, or the emotional authority like I tend to immediately react upon something and, and I come up with a yes no very quickly but it's probably too soon that I'm not letting it play out and then making the best decision for myself because well, at, that, at that moment yeah that immediate yes no that you're getting is because you are a generator so that gut is activating Okay. But again, it's just giving me the information of like, okay, we're going along for the ride now. Okay, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> yeah. And for those who joined us a little late, we're talking about human design. And Dr. Lisa Thompson has been working with this in her personal life and her professional life for many years and used it to make a decision one month to move to Hawaii and six months later make it happen while COVID was going on. Yeah. So it really is, um, it's a, a inter I guess it's a tool. I mean, what would you call it? A, yeah, a tool I, use? I call it a tool because um, that's how I use it. It's one okay. of, I've got a lot of tools in my toolkit. Yeah, and it's one of them, yeah. And this is one of the main ones that I use that um, the, the really interesting thing about human design is that, again, because we are so conditioned throughout our lives that it can take years, like, up to and longer than seven years to really understand it at a depth and work with it in a way where it's just like second nature to you, even though it's who you actually are born to be. But if, you know, one thing that I wish that I would have known, you know, as a child is this about myself and even knowing it for my kids, it really helps me parent them a little bit better because when I know who they are and my son, he is kind of a unique little creature. <laughs> well, knowing that about him, then I'm not necessarily trying to force him into this box that society would want him to be in. He's got a little more freedom with me. Now with his dad, not so much, even though his dad knows this human design because he knows the coach that I've been working with for seven years. And but he doesn't really take it in for himself. And he doesn't really want to know who his son is. But because I understand, you know, who my son is, it helps yeah. me um, have a little more patience with his energy because he is a manifester. And one of the things about being a manifester is that you just want to go. You want to make things happen. You are the initiator and your job is to inform. So that would be their strategy is to inform. Ours is to respond. Um, they, they're not asking for permission. They're just like, <laughs> I'm gonna go over here and do this thing. We're and doing so, this now. <laughs> yeah, right. And it's like, okay. <laughs> and even if I tell him, you know, you need to ask me first, like I used to tell him that, and but he, it's not in his like natural design to ask for permission. That's not how he's built. He is built just to take off like a Ferrari. <laughs> nice. Hi, Bridget and Giovanna. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, and um, Lisa, I know you've got some, like, you can do a just a chart with you, right? You can 
yeah. your one-on-one -on -one consultation and get your chart done. But you're also teaching some classes coming up. So what's, yeah. your, what's your next class? Because, and then she has a retreat in Hawaii, people. <laughs> so... so yeah. Okay. So yeah, the chart readings, um, they're, they are an hour long each. And the first one is an overview of like what, what the overall chart is. And then if people want to go deeper, then we can get deeper and deeper. Um, the class that I'm teaching, it actually starts next Thursday, August 5th. And it's a four week class intro to human design, getting to know your authentic self. And um, it's at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Each class is roughly an hour to two hours, depending on how many people are in the class, how many questions there are, because I like to make sure people really are understanding the information. And so really with, with this class, you're understanding your type, your inner authority, what your profile is, you're understanding what all the lines and numbers mean in the chart. And it gives you a really good starting place to to really appreciate who you are, but also then start appreciating who your friends and family are. Because when we, when we understand ourselves, how we operate, and then we know, oh, my spouse, he's something completely different, or my best friend, something <laughs> completely different, it gives a lot more grace to let people be their authentic selves so that we're not, not we, you and I would not be frustrated of like, well, What's taking them so long or why, you know, why are they like that? Yeah. I, I think of that like with um, the five love languages, knowing somebody's love language helps you know how to interact a little bit better too. So this is yeah. a, another yeah. option, deeper, I don't want to say better, but a deeper look at to who the person is over the love yeah. language. Yeah. Do you think that they, and I don't even know, this may not even be a right question, but do you, is in the human design, would you be able to identify love languages through that? Do you think that there's ones that fit better or not? Or that's probably completely different? Not really. They're very separate because there are so many intricacies. And Tammy has been on this ride with me since February, actually since last fall. She's taken every one of my classes and has got all the books I've recommended now and um she, I think, will help corroborate this of like, there are so many fine details in terms of the traits and characters that it's hard to just say, okay, no, yeah, this person definitely is service. And this, per there are elements that you could pick up from that, but it wouldn't necessarily give you the whole picture. Okay. But I do love the five love languages. In fact, I reference it in my Sacred Soul Love book because for me, it was really important for me to understand how I receive love, but then also how I give love because I grew up not feeling like I was getting love. Yeah. And because my mom was buying me gifts and I am not a gift receiver. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Service and quality time are like my top two. And so that's one thing my husband, he knows that about me and he actually because he's very consciously aware of it. So he is always doing service things for me which just, it's like, oh, thank you, sweetie. Exactly. And I think that that's what I love about the book, because especially if, like, if your top one, my top one is affirmation and then touch is my second. But if, if I was in partnership with somebody and their top one is gifts, and so they're not necessarily saying nice things to me, but they're giving me things, then you just don't feel love because that's not your love language. So yeah. when you know, and now that I know that gifts is people's love language, like I have a friend who tends to, three or four times a year, send me some something small in the mail. And before I knew that as a love language, I'm like, what? Do, thank you. And I would never say to that person, um, what are you doing? But I'm like, what am I going to do with this? But it's really about, you know, that they're showing that they love me by thinking of me at the store and buying that little thing to send to me or a card or whatever. So it really helps to know um, the motivation behind it, not just like, what am I going to do with this trinket now that I have to figure out a place to store? <laughs> Right. <laughs> I know that's a whole other can of worms. Yeah. But, and then you, yeah, you mentioned um, the retreat. So I do have a six day um, sacred soul Kona retreat coming up in October from October 17th to the 23rd. And really it's a combination of all of the different things that I offer. So 
it's human design rolled into it. It's also ha have elements of past life regression therapy. You know, I got trained with Denise Lynn four years ago, and I've been incorporating that into the work I do with clients, healing blockages and limitations, really help helping people get out of their fear because that, I mean, that's one thing in my life. I've got these huge transitions where there were a lot of places where, yeah, there was fear, yeah. but I was able to navigate that fear and like leap through it anyway and yeah. do things like move to Hawaii or change careers or leave a bad marriage, you know, things like that, that people get so stuck in. And so, Sometimes it's more comfortable to be in the discomfort than go into the unknown. So oh, yeah. a lot of people say stuck in that. And I've been there myself for Me sure. Too. <laughs> Me too. Two ex-husbands, a couple careers, mm -hmm. some <laughs> like friends. Now, now you live in Hawaii, so all <laughs> is working well at this point in your life. Yes. Uh, Sam, I am here on Tuesdays and Thursdays to help people. We focus on heightening celebrations and lessening sorrows through a positive focus. Today we are talking with Dr. Lisa Thompson about human design. And Charlotte, this is also your first timer here. Uh, also first timer, loads of broken tools and misconceptions about self and choices. Um, Charlotte, oh, Charlotte's Web is her name on Facebook. I love that. Um, I hope this has helped you and please come back on Tuesdays and Thursdays because I offer a lot of different tips on and ways to just feel a little bit better about yourself. My my values are love, kindness, compassion, and peace. And that is what we work on Tuesdays and Thursdays here on Embrace Your Life Chats. Lisa, is there anything else that you would like to share in closing? Or um, I put your websites in the um, subject in the comments there, though. Thank you. To be able to join. The only, the brand new thing that I'm offering for anyone that's just coming on vacation to Hawaii, to the Big Island specifically, because that is where I live, is I've put together, for those that can't do the six day long retreat, but still want some of that healing and coaching that I do, plus fun eco experiences, because I'm all about that. Um, I have created four different one day private retreats that are um you can pick one or all of them and so i've got a dolphin experience i have manta ray nighttime circle experience a galactic connection experience and goddess pele so lots of fun things to do if you are traveling to hawaii i've been to hawaii twice i've been to maui and Oahu, my first visit, and then Kauai, my second visit. I have yet to be on the big island, but I will get there because yes, well. <laughs> somewhere in my past life, I'm pretty sure I must have lived there or was a dolphin off the shores of, of Hawaii. I'm not sure, but it is definitely, um, I love traveling, but it's still a place that anytime I think about it, I'm like, oh, Hawaii. Yeah. So. Well, thank you, Lisa, and I'm sure that I'll have you join us again for other topics. And um, again, thank you for joining us and thank everyone here who has joined us. Again, it's Dr. Lisa Thompson. It's, it's DrLisaThompson.com, correct? Dr. Lisa J. Thompson. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the other one was taken. There's a lot of Dr. Lisa Thompsons out there. That's apparently. interesting. Well, that's why mine is Carol C.C. C. Miller, because there's a lot of Carol Millers out there. So put that nickname in there and that helps. But thank you again. And everyone, thank you for joining us today. I will be back Tuesday. Actually, I've got a group discussion on Tuesday. I'm going to be back tomorrow. This is Wednesday. I'm used to doing Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'll be back tomorrow. It'll probably just be me. On Tuesday, I'm going to have a group discussion with several different people joining, and we're going to talk about forgiveness, what it means to us individually, how easy it's been to forgive, and what we might still need to forgive. So join me tomorrow. I'm not sure what the topic will be, but it'll be something about heightening your celebrations and lessening your sorrows. And thank you so much, Lisa. And remember, you matter. You matter to me, you matter to the world, and most, most, most importantly, you matter to you. So take care, and we'll talk again soon. So long for now. Bye-bye.